Hey everyone, it is Larry here at LC Model Shipbuilding. It's been it's been a couple weeks since uh, we posted anything with an actual build. Um, we've been doing a lot of product review videos, or I've been doing a lot of product review videos for uh, Titanic. But um, excited to be kind of back at it. Worked on the uh, carronades, which took forever. Um, essentially, that's what I've been doing for the last two weeks um, with my broken ankle. Has been working on. Uh, Canon carronades, but they are complete, and uh, now we are moving on, and uh, on this video we're going to get the uh, mizzen mast, as you can see, installed, and get the shrouds up on that. Um, moving along pretty good now at this point, so anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and uh, thank you very much for watching. Okay, here we are back at it. I know it has been a while since uh, the build has happened, but since we've been gone, um been working on quite a bit um i know uh when i left off the last video i had said that i was going to work on finishing the carronades they are now complete so they took forever that was the biggest part of this delay um i really didn't want to go back through and redo or reshow things that i have shown already such as doing the carronades um doing our uh our dead eyes down here so they're just kind of chilling right here um, for when we start to put the mast on which will be in this video but um, what we're going to do um, is finish up a few little deck bits that we got going on um, first couple are stairs that go down in these cargo holds and uh, here they are I had really considered making my own on these, um, just because of the amount of flashing that was on them, but uh, I'm just going to end up going with the kit ones at this point. They're not that bad, and uh, once I cut the flashing away and painted them up, they'll, they'll do the job, and you're not really going to see them, so I figured, what the heck, um, we're going to go with that. But um, what else? While we were, while we were not filming... Um, finished up the railings along both sides um haven't decided if i'm going to put the uh hammocks in them because this is where sailors would have stored their hammocks to dry out um after basically washing them or sleeping or whatever they did um but anyway that's what those were kind of used for so i'm debating whether i'll end up doing that or not um i don't know i I know it'll be a long process to make them because I'm going to have to individually make each individual one, uh, which will definitely be time consuming. So more to come on that. Chances are though, probably not. Uh, I'm just looking at these stairs right now and how they go in. So they, once I don't drop them, they have two little holes that are down there that they end up fitting into. Um, just want to make sure I put them on the right side quick before I go ahead and glue them in. So I am referring back to the instructions. And really, I probably should have put these in a long time ago, um, back before I put the lifeboats in and uh, everything else, but it'll be okay. We will power through it. All right, so they go that direction. That's what I thought. All right, so tweezers. And let me get a little bit of glue here going. Ah, so what else is new with this? Um, ton of ton of roping. I mean, I, I can't even explain the pure amount of knots that had to be tied on each individual carronade. Um, I really never thought it was going to end, so I'm so happy to be done with them. Um, I can probably say it will be a little while before I decide to go ahead and do the HMS victory. I just, I need a break from uh, this after going through it, but that's okay because I got the break in Titanic, which I'm sure will have its own unique uh, fun, but anyway, let me just get these set.
Okay. I gotta touch up. Oh, no. I thought I was set, and I guess I'm not. I know I have to touch up the very top of the ladder here. Not a big deal. Okay, that's set. I'm just gonna set a little bit of more glue on the top there with the toothpick, just so it doesn't go anywhere. And we did a little bit of cleanup in the shop because it was getting a little difficult to maneuver in here. So I'm definitely happy, happier working in a little bit cleaner, I guess you'd say, environment, organized, whatever you want to call it. Unfortunately, I find that when I build, I end up just kind of making a mess as I'm going. So I'm going to try to do a better job of that. Okay. Ooh, I don't want to drop him in there. Like that. Here we go. And... Yes, that's set. Okay, again a little bit of glue just to hold it. And I'll touch up the brown there once I'm uh, done. Oh, I guess you probably couldn't see that, it was off camera. Sorry about that, but there you go. It is there, as you can see, right in there. And there, but that was that one was on camera. Okay, the next one we're going to do is under the lifeboat. So it goes right here. Alright. Alright, so glue again and since the last video I'm doing quite a bit better with my whole broken ankle uh, actually go back to the doctor tomorrow so no, I'm sorry not tomorrow but m Monday well whenever this video gets posted it might be tomorrow who knows um, and then they will do an x-ray and determine if I have to get another cast or not. But I actually feel like it has improved drastically. I can pretty much stand on it now. And uh, it's not bothering me really at all. So hopefully. Hopefully. Alright. So we got those. Um, next up we have our pin rails. And they all go along. I did... I did the ones back here on the back side, um, but we have all these that go over here on the uh, on the starboard side. So let me just get the right page so I get the right part numbers in on them. All right, so we have 48, and I pre-painted all of these before, long ago actually. So they uh, pretty much are ready just to go just got to clean them up a little bit when you break your sprue but it's pretty much on the bottom anyhow and you can't really see it so not a big deal okay a little bit more glue Alright, and 
48 goes back here. I did consider doing the drilling out of these and putting metal pins in. Um, I decided against that because I played with uh, some of the plastic ones already, just tying some stuff to them and uh, didn't really have any issues. I think as long as, oh, you can't see, I'm so sorry. Let me move it, okay. I think as long as I, um, I don't go crazy with the knots and tying it, we should be fine. I mean, they're made to do this, so. I don't foresee it being too big of a problem. This gets increasingly hard with the uh, carronades all in place and all of the rigging for them. So, just an FYI, if you end up doing this, it does become a challenge. I think I'm gonna get more glue because I don't trust that at this point. Okay, there we go. All right, that one's on. And we got two 47s. Which go just before midship. Sorry, I'm just trimming a little bit. I think with uh, not videoing here for almost two weeks, I've gotten gotten a little used to not videoing while I'm building. So I do apologize if I uh, if I um, am off camera a lot. I promise I will get back into the swing of that as best I can. I know it always is kind of a challenge, but uh, I was getting a little bit better at it there for quite a while before. Uh, before we took our little carronade break. But I really didn't want to take, it wasn't that I took a break. Um, it was just that I didn't want to film the same thing 20 times and not have new content that hadn't been covered already. So it just was one of those deals where I had to bite the bullet and get it done. But, that being said, all of the masts are done and ready to go. Um, and what my plan is for this, with the mast, are we're going to start with the mizzen mast back here in the back and work our way forward. So I'm going to basically do the standing rigging on the mizzen mast. And actually, once we get these, uh, these on... That will be our next step, is putting that mast in. So um, I'm going to put this one in, and then I'm going to pause it to go ahead and do the bow ones up there. Um, and then, actually, when we get back, it may be mizzen mast time, unless I see anything that I'm missing on the deck here. Um, but I'm pretty sure I got everything. Oh, no, I have one more piece, the piece that goes above the gallery. We'll do that real quick before we pause. That only takes a minute, though. Ugh. There we go. You have to get them just the right angle, or they don't. They don't like to play. All right, so on the back or the rear, we have this, which goes here. So I'm gonna just glue that up real quick and throw that on. And uh, then I'll pause, finish up the pin rails up on the front, and then we'll come back and uh, 
put a mast in. So this is pretty basic. I still got to paint the brown on the rail. Um, it'll only take a minute, but there we go. And that then, whoops. That then will come up. Sorry about my arm. That will come up and sit up here like so. So there we go. I gotta see what actually holds that up. I didn't really pay that close of attention yet. And I got a couple little um, cleats to put on back here. So let me pause it, do the um, pin rails, these couple cleats back here, and we will be back. Okay, those are all in now, so you can see we have all of our, our pin rails up and ready. So they're on. And next up for deck pieces, before we move on to the final, we have, not the final, but the mast, we have this little piece that goes right here. And I'm debating whether to hold off on this until I do the bowsprit, which I think I'm going to do just so I can kind of guide it in there a little bit, unless I see a reason in the directions not to, but I really don't. So I'm going to hold off on that for right now. Um, but we got all of our cleats on back in the back here. So that's all said and done. So I am going to say it is time to start masting up. So, the rear mizzen mast has an extra, um, not yard, but an extra mast that goes on the back here for the, um, the, uh, sail, the longer sail, not the longer sail, but the one that goes horizontal. Sorry, I'm looking for a piece that I seem to have dropped. Okay, well, let me pause this a minute. Okay, so here we go. There's our mizzen mast all pretty much set and ready to go. Um, this goes on the back here and up into the uh, up into the crow's nest like so. So we're going to get that lined up and then we'll glue that in. Um, just want to make sure I don't have anything in a spot that it shouldn't be, but we look to be okay. So, let me get some glue. And for this, I am going to just use standard model glue. Um, I'm not using CA. I think it should be perfectly fine. Do -do -do. Don't need a ton of it, but oh, the tube is going to decide I need a ton of it. All right, that's okay. So, first I'm going to just kind of dip the top in there a little bit, because you won't ever see this, so just want to have enough glue on it so that that stays in there, like so. And now I'm going to use Mr. Toothpick and I'm going to line the perimeter here with glue. And the lower one. Okay. And these do fit pretty tight, so it really should not be an overly big issue for me here but let me back this up just a second gotta find find the hole in the lower deck Just 
Make sure that's lined up okay. Yeah, it looks fine. Of course, I dropped that. It needs to go about another half of an inch down. So let me put this back in. It goes there. Sorry for all the movement. It's just trying to get this to go where it needs to go. So don't want to break it or the ship at this point. Okay, that is dead on down there. I'm wondering if the scale decks are causing a little bit of an issue here. It's just got like a half of an inch. Let me pause it a minute just because I need the camera out of the angle here. Okay, so that had some clear challenges, but uh, it's in and we're good. Slightly off, but I think once I start doing the tie downs um, for the standing rigging, it will be fine. Uh, just getting it perfect. But um, anyway, um, our first step will be running our shrouds, which we kind of covered that in previous video, um, but I'll just kind of go over it one more time, I guess, because um, that's what's got to happen before really anything else can happen. So we're going to build the shrouds. Then in looking at how the rigging goes, um, I'm actually going to need the next mast forward. So because we have a bunch of lot cross lines that come basically across that way so we're going to end up having to do them um but that's not that big of a deal my biggest thought process was though trying to do as much as i could with one mast before putting the next one on and working my way forward but it's not going to be entirely possible so we will persevere and make it through but not a big deal so these again i'm trying to keep pretty much at the same length as i did on the front for the foremast in our last video um, my little technique to this is hit it with the ca glue just like that let it sit for a minute or so then we will uh, tie some lashing around that to give it the effect. And I do that in two spots. Just loop it around. Hit it with CA again. I'm gonna let that sit for a second. In the meantime, I'll tie the next one.
so I have a feeling that building these shrubs and then the rat lines across them are probably going to be just as time consuming as the cannons. But maybe not. I don't know. I was getting faster at the uh, rat lines before I did this. But the other thing in the last video, I realized that I messed up and made an error and didn't make them in pairs. Um, because ideally what you want to have happen is one comes up, wraps around here, and then comes back down. I did not do that in my last demonstration. It'll be okay. I have a workaround for it already planned. But for the rest of them, as we go forward, well, I guess backward, actually, um, I will do them the, in the pair format. So that way you'll kind of see where I'm going with this here in a minute. And how I'm going to end up doing them is I'm going to do one pair on port side or on starboard side and then one pair on port side and just keep alternating back and forth. That way I keep the mass straight. Um, I don't want it to start leaning goofy and doing that kind of weird stuff. So, anyway, I won't, I'll pause the video when I do the uh, dead eyes because they actually take a couple, not too long, but they take a couple minutes. Um, and I think you've, if you've watched the previous videos, have seen me do them three or four times now at this point, so no real need to go back through that again, I don't think. But if we need to, just comment and we'll do it in the uh, in the main mast video when we get over to that one. And I debated whether I was going to do the sails now or wait until I have all of it, uh, all of the standing rigging done. And I think from what I've read on the rigging instructions, um, I'm going to be better off. Well, they actually tell you not to do any of the sail work until after all of your standing rigging is done. So we'll follow the instructions on this part. Let's trim this, I'll pause it, I'll put the dead eye together, and then we'll do the loop de loo. And yeah, that'll be that. So be right back. Okay, back at it here. So what we got going on, um, I have the dead eye par partially done over here, and I have this one done. So we're going to bring our shroud rope up through our crow's nest platform. And then we're going to come back down, or well, we're going to come around this piece of the mast. And now we're going to come back down through the same place we came up. Just like that. Now we're going to make sure we're clear of our rope foot lines and all that good stuff. We're going to pull it like tight, but not like crazy tight. Just enough to get some tension on it. Now... I'm happy with how that one looks, so we're going to then loop through our, um, our dead eye clamp, I think that's what they're calling them. There we 
go. Now, I pretty much already have it at the right height that I want it. But I'll be able to adjust that tension with the uh, with the um, dead eye here. So I want to get it close. I mean, as close as I possibly can, which I'm feeling pretty good about where it's at right now. I'm just going to put a dab of glue on here again. I have it just a little bit high, and that's on purpose. Because once I tension it down, it will bring it back into line. You gotta be kidding. Might be out of glue. Okay, time to open a new one. The 10 pack. For like $3. Can't beat it. And I've had this stuff last for years on models, so. All right, here we go. Let's try this again. All right, so we're just about there. Yes. All right, let me tie or cut the slack or the extra here. I'm gonna take a tiny bit more glue on it. So we got those. Now, what I want to do is pull my dead eye to eliminate any slack. And it still needs to be a little bit slack because at the top here, they are going to get kind of tied together like that. So we should be okay. It's a little bit looser than I want. And what I can do for that, is just pull my glue back apart there for a second and take tiny bit more out of the slack. Yeah. That's better right there. Okay, so let me re-glue that. Yes, I can tell that's already better. Definitely don't want it too tight, but on the same 
flip side you don't want it too loose either okay that will work so now we're going to just give a touch of glue back here just to hold that while we tie and they are pretty well level so I'm happy with them all right so a little bit more challenging once we have this rope on here on the opposite side to uh, do the loop here but we'll get through it Like I said before, you don't want it too tight because it'll also bend the mast if you go too far. So you gotta find that happy medium. And also remember that the top will have the cross tie on it as well. I'm sure I'll get better at doing this as I go. Um, this is the first one I've done, obviously, to completion. So there is a little bit of experimentation as I'm going as well. But that is part of modeling. that with a touch of CA just to hold it before I tie it okay and we're just going to tie this Come on. There we go. And I'll do another touch of CA there just to hold that knot. And we cut it. And that one's done. No, it's not done. I still got the little loops to make around the uh, around the uh, thing right here so I'll make up them quick and then uh, we'll be I'll pause it for a minute because it's really just tying a rope around and won't be too exciting but then uh, when we come back we'll probably do the other side and yeah, I'm just playing with it a minute to make sure I like how it is coming. I think we'll be all right. So yeah. All right, be back in a minute. Okay, so trying to get a different angle here because obviously um, we're getting tall and uh, what we're gonna be doing, I need to be able to kind of show. So I got my shrouds up on both sides here One's wrapped around this side, one's wrapped around that side, and now we're going to be taking our shrouds up to here. So this is very similar to what we did in the um, previous episode. Um, so basically, again, it's an eyelet and, uh, and a dead eye, and we're just 
doing the exact same thing that we were previously. It's just smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and set this one up. And then um, once I get it ready, kind of show you what that looks like putting it together. So there we go. Um, next up, we're going to do our little rope loop like we have been with the previous. And surprisingly, in comparison to the carronades, this really is not that bad. Um, I actually don't mind this so much. The carronades were terrible. Just saying. But this is actually kind of therapeutic until I probably start doing the um, the uh, rat line aspect of it. But this basically just goes right along. Again, it's the same thing over and over, but um, it's much, much easier. You're not pulling things and trying to make them fit in and getting proper distances and all that. I mean, you are you are getting proper distances, but you're not you're not doing the same type of work that you were with the uh, carronades. So. Um, once you basically get your size setting, they all just follow the same and you just keep rolling. So nothing too difficult. Okay. So we got that. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the upper part. Now, I thought about ordering some more eyelets, and unfortunately, I completely forgot about it, and I really wish I would have, because I don't have enough to do what I had done in the original mast video um, a few weeks back, because in that video, I had eyelets that were going down, and then I had eyelets that were going up. Well, apparently, you're only supposed to use them on the, uh, on the mast side, or on, not the mast side, but the... Um, the shroud side, the rope side. So, unfortunately, I don't have enough to do what I wanted to do. Um, and I'm going to have to kind of improvise. Which will be okay. I just um, want to make sure uh, make sure I still get the result that I'm looking for. Which shouldn't be a problem, but just mentioning it. If you do order this stuff from his models, order a little bit extra on the eyelets. I just highly recommend that. Okay, got that. Okay. Now, once I get this one tied, we're going to install the lower part of the dead bolt, or dead, uh, yeah, dead bolt, dead eye. Ooh, I almost cut the shroud rope. Okay, there that is. All right, so to do that, um, the hole is smaller than what I need it to be to get the string through, I do believe. I just want to double check that before I go start drilling anything. And I got to check my length here. Should be about there, up, and down. Okay. All right, so that will be our, our rope for our shroud. I'm just gonna loop that around here quick because that's how it will go. Okay. 
Okay. Now, I'm going to get my string. I'm going to use a slightly smaller size than what I'm using for the upper, or for the lower one here. And it will fit through. That'll be fine. Okay. So what I'm going to do with these, because, like I said, I used the eyelets on the other one. I need a little bit longer. I'm going to tie my rope around it. And the reason I'm going longer, we need it to go into a ring on the bottom that's not provided with the kit. So in order to do that, I need to have the space set for it. Now this is going to be the bottom, so just basically got to turn it until you get your upside down face. Alright, there we go. And I am cutting it long just in case because I don't know exactly how this is going to pan out yet. So I'm going to slip both my ropes down here. And there we go. Okay, come on. Well, when this happens, I have this nice dandy little threader tool. Makes life so much easier. I know, I know, beeswax would also. Okay. There we go. So we got that one through, and now we want to skip it so it's all the way over here. So our next one, you want to kind of do this alternating type deal with it. All I can hear right now, unfortunately, is Fortnite, so I don't know if you can hear that on the video. I apologize. It's my kid playing. Okay. I'm actually just going to go ahead and make all four of these because I actually want to start from the outside or the inside and work my way out it just makes sense to do it that way okay so string that through go so I'm gonna pause it a minute go ahead and get the other uh, two in and then we'll come back and uh, string these up quick be right back okay well that was a little bit more challenging than I expected so I'm gonna try to show this ended up having to put hooks underneath um, and that's how they actually attach because I went back and looked at the actual ship, and that's what we came up with. So, that was a good time. I just got done saying in the last segment how, uh, how much simpler this was. 
Although this should be the only really difficult one. Um, the others really should not be too bad at all. So it is what it is. Um, that one's done. Uh, the other mast, as I get up to the main mast and the uh, fore mast, are larger. So they should not quite take the same... Um, it should not quite be the same challenge as that this one was. But, in any case, it does look good. Um, and it looks pretty authentic to the real one, so I'm happy. So now what we're doing is threading our, um, our dead eye for the upper portion of the mast. Hopefully. We're dropping it. I think I'm just going to use the threader. These holes are tiny. There we go. Alright, again, just going to tie not in the back here to hold it from coming through. Cut the slack. Okay, I take about six inches roughly. doing the two inners first. So this is going to be the front inner. Try it without the threader just for the heck of it, but I doubt it. No, nope, this is threader. Hopefully this angle is okay. Can't really guarantee it, but it's kind of the best option I have right now with how tall this is. Oops. Wasn't through it. Sorry if all you can see is my hand. I apologize. Okay. And there is a sequence to doing these. Um, I covered it in one of the videos. Basically, left, then top, then middle bottom, and so on. Because if you don't follow the sequence, they just don't look right. But it holds true all the way through on all of them. There we go. And just don't like the little bit of a thread I got not going through. There we go. And that height looks about right. It's just above the railing. 
So I'm gonna hit it with some CA. Let it sit for a moment. We're gonna bring her up and wrap it around the top again, just like we have on all the other ones. Basically, once I get this section done, I think that's probably going to conclude this video because it's just going to be more of the same, I'm working my way up towards the top. And then we'll pick up the next video probably on, uh, I'm thinking the bow sprit will be the next major difference. Um, well, no, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, we're going to do the standing rigging. That's what we're going to do. So that will be not part two, but another part anyway. Because there's all kinds of stuff that comes from all these areas here and mounts down onto the deck. That you have to run before you can put your sails on. So we'll probably do that. Uh, and then there's like forward ties that go on to the mast in front and the down to the deck basically to hold the mast in place. So yeah, I guess there is still quite a bit. But I knew these shrouds were going to take a little bit of effort and a little bit of time. And I thought they'd be a pretty decent video because I was experimenting with a lot of it myself. So when we did over here, I went up and then straight down, one to two. And when I did over here, this is when I started realizing that I needed to go far, farthest to farthest. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now, where I'm coming from the uh, inside, outside, and then we'll have one that will go here, up and around, to here. So that's basically what the plan will look like. So let me go ahead and get this one mounted up, and then I'll come back real quick with these done, and we'll take a look at that. And I'll be back. Okay, so essentially they are on. Um... I did not do the other side yet. I'm going to do that in between videos. But you can basically see what's going on now at this point. And I will do, do the um, the other set that go up here as well off video. So that will be the next um, point or next project, I guess you'd say. So in between videos, I'll get that. Um, roped up and all that good stuff and then when we start out on video number 12 I believe it is um, we'll be putting main mast in um, and I actually might just go ahead and put that in do the shrouds in between and then pick up once the shrouds are done on the main one so we can start doing the um, standing rigging but it will kind of depend on where I'm at and what's going on so Anyway, um, thank you very much for watching. If you uh, haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you subscribe so you get the notifications when we have new videos come up. Um, I really think probably about two weeks, somewhere in that neighborhood, to have this one pretty much wrapped up. Um, should be moving along pretty darn well uh, for the next few days here. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.